all of your blessings, uh, for your love that you continue to show towards all of us, Lord. And we thank you for this time that we have to have to share your word. Now, Lord, I pray that you would anoint me for this task, anoint the hearers of your word, that we all become divine doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we've been in this series uh, moving forward. We're in part five of moving forward. Come on, say moving forward. Moving forward. We're in part five of moving forward and how important it is that we move forward. And I've given you these three places that all of us are in at some point uh, in our life. And uh, let's go to that slide right there. The first one is we are moving forward, that means we're overcoming, that means we're getting past some things, right? We talked about that. That means we're walking through, that means we're being blessed, amen? amen. And that's where we want to be. Come on, say, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. be. I want to be there. Sometimes we're standing still. Mm -hmm. Standing still means we're stuck in a life that sucks, amen? amen. Sometimes we're stuck in positions in things and circumstances that are really bad and we can't find our way out. Still wrestling with the same circumstances, the same habits, still influenced by the same negative people, still doing the same old actions that get the same old results. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're in that position of standing still. We don't want to be there. Amen. Amen. And sometimes, and I want to clarify one thing, when we're talking about uh, this standing still, we're not saying God has, this is different from when God say, be still. That's right. This is when we're standing still, stuck. Amen. When, when God is trying to get us to move and we are not moving. Amen. Okay. We don't want to be there. Then the third one is falling behind. Falling. Come on, say falling behind. Falling behind. Falling behind. Falling behind is losing. Living in lack and living in hope. We don't want that. That shouldn't be us. Amen? Amen. Why that shouldn't be us? Because John 10 and 10 told us, told us the thief cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said to the believers, which that's us, I am come that you might have life. And then one translation say, experience it more abundantly. Amen. So I want to experience life to its fullest, till it overflows in my life. Amen. So we don't want to be falling behind. We want to be moving forward. Now, to move forward, often we got to be mentally and spiritually tough. Okay. Amen. Mentally and spiritually tough. Amen. Amen. To, to move forward because we face challenges. Everyone in here will, shall, have faced challenges in our life. Amen. Amen. All of us, we deal with it. We face things in our life, but we got to be mentally and spiritually tough tough to move forward. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at a story today in 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 7 and 8. 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 7 and 8. And I'm going to go ahead and read it to you this morning. It says, but as for you, be strong and courageous. For your work will be rewarded. I want you to grab hold to that one right there. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard the, this message from Azariah the prophet, he took courage and removed all the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin. And in the towns he had captured, in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. Let me give you a little background before we dive into this passage that we're talking about to, uh, today. In, in the preceding verses of 1 uh, through 6, the prophet Azariah was giving King uh, Asa a word. And his word in, in verse 2 was, stay with the Lord. Come on, say, stay with, stay with the Lord. His word was, stay with the Lord, because if you'll stay with him, he will stay with you. Amen. He said, you got, you, got, you got to stay with, you got to stay with the Lord. You got, you got to make sure that he's priority in your life. So, come on, say, stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. And he also said that you had gone a long time 
without a priest to give you instructions or, or to teach you. You've been, you've been going a long time, nor did you have God's law working in your life. So, so one thing he told him to stay with the Lord, and he said, now you've gone a long time without, without instructions from a priest. But he said, but even at that, when things didn't go right, the Lord brought you through. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Anybody ever experienced that when you know you weren't doing the right thing? When you know when your activities of your life was not what God expects from you, and yet God still brought you through. That's the kind of God we serve is that he, he, he don't take care of you because you're perfect. He take care of you because he loves you. So, so the prophet Azariah was telling him, he, he, he was saying, he was saying, even when things weren't, weren't good, God was still taking care of you and, and bringing you out. And then it goes on down in, in about verse 5 and verse 6, and it said, and then it was dangerous to travel. He was telling him about all the trouble that was going on. He said, trouble everywhere. And there were all kinds of issues. So he was telling them that, that you got to stick with God. He's been with you even when you went with him. All right. He said it's been a long time that, that you didn't have a priest working in your life to teach you, nor the word to govern your life. There's been all kinds of trouble going on in your life and around your life. God will protect you for some. He allowed some things to happen in your life. And then he get to verse 7 that we just read. All right. And he said, but as for you. Mm -hmm. He was saying, you've been dealing with a bunch of stuff. And, and the people have been dealing with a bunch of stuff. Uh, 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 Brother Cedric mentioned about, uh, about shootings and all the things that's going on in our communities and, and all around us and in our families and, and all kinds of things going on. And he said, sometimes we're tempted to run away from it. And that's what the prophet was saying to, uh, to, to Asa is that he was, he was tempted to run away from it, but he said, but as for you, and, and, and I like that, that, that he used that term, but as for you, because I'm convinced that we're in a season, church, yeah. that God is saying to us, as for you. Yeah. 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 He, 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 said, he said, as for you, Sister Tracy, and, and as for you, Pastor Dre, and, and as for you, Minister Carroll, he said, as for you, yeah. I got a whole different story. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I, I got something totally different for you. And then I said, point number one in verse seven is this, is that it, your, but as for you is, even though the land is in trouble, you can still succeed. Right. Why can't you succeed? Because he knows your name. Right. Do, do you know that no matter what all the trouble is around you, Sister Sharon, he knows you. He, he knows the situations that might be going on in your life. He might, might, might know, your, he know your circumstances and, and things may not be the way we want them. But what God is saying, and as he, uh, the prophet said to Asa, he's saying to us today, but as for you. He said, I, I need your attention and I need you to know that, that I know your name. Yes. Not only do I know your name, I know your circumstances. Yes. Not only do I know your name and your circumstances, I know what you stand in need of. Amen. Amen. He said, he said I, I, I ask for you. Uh, even, even though the land is troubled, you still can't conceive, uh, can succeed. John 15, 16. Listen, listen to this. We got to know that we've been chosen. Come on, say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Come on, how do you believe that? Amen. I mean, you really got to believe that. You know what? I'm chosen. And, and in the season that I'm in right now is that I'm chosen to deal with the good and the bad. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, God has chosen me to be, to be able to celebrate whether things are perfect or whether things are imperfect. Amen. Why? Because he's made you a vessel to give him glory. He made you a vessel and a testimony that other folks can know what God can do in your life. Amen. Amen. So, so, so he said, but as for you, he said, be strong. Amen. And you've been chosen. John 15, 16, it says this. Look at what it says. It says, you have been chosen. 
You have, wait a minute, it says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Can I tell y'all this? First of all, you need to know that you didn't find God. You know how sometimes people say, you know, praise the Lord, I didn't find God. Well, can I tell you that God ain't never been lost? You know, you know sometimes people go to jail and they say, no, God just let him slow down in jail so he can get his attention. Amen. God was never lost. I just want you to know that. He know his direction. Amen. He was never lost. But the passage right here said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Watch this. Not only have I chosen you, he said, and I have what? He has appointed you. He, he has a he's, he's, he has appointed and placed and purposefully planted you. Oh, I love that right there. He said he's appointed you. That means that means that that means that he has made a declaration and then placed you somewhere. So in his declaration, he gave you authority over your situation. Appointment. Come on, say appointment. Appointment. Then he placed you. Then he placed you sometimes in the places that you might not be comfortable with, but you've been placed. Amen. Isn't that amazing how sometimes God will place us somewhere that I don't feel like that's my place to be because I just ain't comfortable. I ain't got no peace about this. Come on, somebody. Well, do you think that Jesus had peace about the cross? Do, do you think that every time when Paul went to a city, he had peace about what was going on? Just in case you don't know, he did not. But he did it because he was appointed and placed. Come on, somebody. So you've been appointed, you've been placed, and then it says, and purposefully planted. So sometimes you've been put in some places that it was on purpose planted. Now, you know, when you plant it, that, that means you're down in there. Yeah, yeah. See, sometimes you can be placed somewhere and you can be on top of the ground. That's right. That's right. You can just be on top, placed there. But when you plant it, it implies that you dug in. That means somebody say, hunker down. Hey, man, come on, somebody. Sometimes that God places you in some situations that you have been planted to hunker down. Yeah. And before he said planted, he said purposefully. That's right. That's right. So, so there's a reason. So God has given you something for, for to, 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 to make something happen. Amen. I never wonder why God places you sometimes in some places and then plants you somewhere. I, I'm telling you, can I tell y'all this? When I was at my job about the first 10 years, I was wondering what I had been to God for him to place me on this job. I was just praying. I was praying, Lord, I need a new job. I don't like this. I don't need to go somewhere else. I'm just getting tired of it. And every time I would pray about that, watch this. I'd get another coworker that come with an issue. They, they either was uh, going through a divorce and their wives left them with the children. <laughs> I mean, it was like five or six of them, and I'm like, why, why I got to keep going through this? Why do I? Why me, Lord? And I finally got it. He was saying, I planted you a long time ago for purpose. And once I gather what he said, my job started being more peaceable in here and here. Watch this. But not out there. Right. In other words, that didn't change. Yeah. I changed. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that must happen in our life is when you begin to understand your purpose, you still may not have peace on the outside, uh -huh. but you will have peace on the inside. Yeah. Because you will understand that, that my purpose is bigger than how I feel. That's it. That's it. Amen. 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 You, you'll begin to understand. You won't be able to understand everything about it, but we, what you will know is that I was planted for this. Amen. Amen. So he says that I was appointed and placed and purposely planted you so that you would go, watch this, and bear fruit. Uh -huh. You know why God plants you? So you can bear fruit. Amen. So that you can be pr productive and, and, and produce stuff. Now, now, some people may not understand your planting. Amen, that's right. Some people may not understand. Don't look for affirmation from
from other folks. Only get your confirmation from God. See, sometimes we want other folks. I think you might have said that this month. Sometimes we want other folks to get to get in our corner. Don't worry about nobody else in your corner. If God be for it. Sometimes everybody might not be happy. But you got to do what God instructs you to do because he planted you to produce fruit. Amen. And then he didn't say just plant it. And, and he said so that you would go and bear fruit and then keep bearing fruit. Amen. Not, a, not one season of fruit. That's right. But keep bearing fruit. Amen. Come on, say, I want to be a fruit bearer. I want to be a fruit bearer. So keep, keep on bearing that, that your fruit will remain and be lasting. Mm -hmm. So in other words, even in the middle of trouble, your fruit will still last. Yeah. Yeah. Well, come on now. Yeah. We got to get that part right there. That even when trouble show up, I can still produce. Amen. We got to learn how to produce fruit even when I, like, everything ain't good for us too. Amen. How are we going to show people that?
and they stay up. That's right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes our religious religion keeps us from celebrating God. Yeah, every round go high and high. I take any song that the world has made and I turn it into a God song. Amen. Amen. When I drop it like it's hot, I drop down on my knees like it's hot. Sometimes we need to drop that because your situation is hot. You want to know how to drop it like it's hot and get down on your knees and say, Father! Thank you for praying for me and thank the Lord for touching me because before I think about it, I went down on my knees. I've been saying, Father, will you give one of them to help me? Amen. Amen. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed. I mean, we we confused. We don't know what to do. He yes. said, yes. but we're not driven to despair. See, sometimes we find ourselves in these situations, right? Amen. We got to keep moving. How do we keep moving? Knowing that God has the answer Amen. and He will work it out. So I'm gonna keep moving Amen. anyway. Amen. And I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the situation is. But I know God's gonna work it out, right? Because all things are working together yes. for. For my good, because I love the God, love God, and I am called according to His purpose. Amen. We got to start believing the scriptures that we already know. Amen. Everybody, you probably know a hundred scriptures. You might can't tell you where it is, but you know it. We've been using it as cl cliches, right? Stop using it as a cliche and use it as a faith. Amen. Use it, use it as your faith. Amen. It says that this. It says we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. Sometimes life is chasing you. Come on, somebody. Sometimes things are just all kinds of negativity is working, troubles and situations going on in your life. But this what we know is that God will not abandon us. Keep moving forward. Amen. 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 We get knocked down. But we ain't destroyed. Sometimes you do get knocked down. Yeah. Let's be honest. You that knocked me down. Yeah. Amen. But I ain't destroyed. Yeah. And what all he's saying is that I can get back up again. Yeah. Stay down. Is it? He said, I ain't staying down, bro. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm a little dirty. <laughs> get up. Get up. Wipe yourself off. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. See, these are principles yeah. that we know because you taught your children. Yeah. Yeah. Your children used to ride their bike and they fall down. And you would look at them and you say, get up. You okay? I got what you say. You'll take even if they got a little bruise on their knee. You'll say, "You okay?" You okay? We gotta learn how to say, "You okay?" You gotta learn how to tell yourself, "I'm okay." Yeah, I got a little bruise right there. Yeah, I'm bleeding a little bit. Go see the nurse. Go see somebody that'll help you. That's it. Go give, go talk to somebody that's gonna give you some medicine. All right. Go talk to somebody that's gonna lay hands on you. That's it. Amen. That's it. Being strong is making action out of what you already know in your head. See, see, being strong, being strong is is, is, is become action and stuff that you already know. You already know I can do all Things. through. Things. You already know that. That's right. <laughs> Ephesians 6 and 10. Look at this. It says the final word. It says be strong what? In the Lord. And in his power. In, in whose power? His power. Who power? His power. When Jesus rose, rose from the from the dead, he said, Now all power. Come on, all power is now in my hand. So so connect those two. He got all power. When I when I need to move forward and there is a struggle, he got the power to help. So one of two things that we gotta learn. We gotta learn how to resist. Come on, say resist. resist. You got to learn how to resist how you feel and overcome how you feel with what he said. Amen. 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 You got to learn how to resist things. You got to learn how to resist 
negativity. You got to learn how to, <clears throat> how to resist things that are not right. Mm -hmm. And then we got to learn how to accept. Come on, say accept. accept. You got to learn how to accept what God says. Yes. Amen. Thank you for that one right there. Right there, man, right there. Amen. We got to learn how to accept Amen. what God, God says. Amen. Because sometimes what he says is not convenient. That's right. Sometimes what he says makes me Amen. uncomfortable. Amen. Sometimes what he says may make me do something that I don't want to do. All right. All right. Help us. That's it. We got to learn how to accept it. So being strong is learn how to resist and learn how to accept it. Amen. Come on, say, that's being strong. Courageous. Come on, say courageous. Courageous. Listen at this statement. Being courageous doesn't mean that you won't be afraid. On the contrary, when I am afraid is when my courageousness shows up. Right. 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 That wouldn't be realistic to say, you know, don't, don't be afraid. Yeah, you're going to be afraid, but it ain't going to keep you from being courageous. Amen. Instead, it means press through the fear when you feel afraid. That's right. Moving forward, even if it feels unnatural to go, mm -hmm. even if it feels uh, uh, hard to resist, go ahead and resist. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, say when we know how to say yes and when we know how to say no. Mm -hmm. You know what? One of the things Christians, we got to learn believers, we got to learn how to say no. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's practice. <laughs> Come on, get your lip ready. Say, say no. 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 And smile. <laughs> Come on, say no. 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 And smile. <laughs> See, take the pressure out. When you say no and you say the ugly, no. You got the pressure on you. Right. But when I can say no. Because, no. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the Antichrist's work is to wear the saints out. Amen. So he keep on saying yes to this. Yes to that, yes to this, and for long you be stressed out. No, you gotta learn how to say what? No. Come on, I need everybody to practice. Come on, one more time. Say it together in unison. Ready? No. Come on, one more time. No. One for the Holy Spirit. No. Amen. We gotta learn how to say no, and we gotta learn how to say yes to God. Yes. Come on, say it. Come on, say yes. Yes. Oh, that one in unison. Ready? Yes. Come on, one more time. Yes. One more time. Yes. yes. Sounds good. We got to learn how to say no, and we got to learn how to say yes. And you got to know where to put them in the right place. Amen. 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 We got to twist it. And then he said in that verse, he said, he said, he said this. He said, but as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work shall be rewarded. Your work, reward for your work. Come on, say rewards. Reward. Everybody like rewards, right? Amen. Listen at this. Strong and courageous are faith descriptive words. Come on, let me say it again. Strong and courageous are faith descriptive words. So when I'm acting in faith, I am being strong and courageous. Because to walk in faith, you got to be what? Strong and courageous. When Peter got ready to walk on water, we know about his faith. But that took courage. Because you're not supposed to walk on water. But he said yes to Jesus. Watch this. If you want to do something incredible, learn how to say it. Yes. To who? Jesus. If we'll say yes to Jesus, there'll be some incredible things happen. Yes. But often we say that no to Jesus and yes to the other stuff. Yes. Help us, help us, Lord. Help us. Hebrews 11 and 6. Prove out what I just said. But without what? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. You got to believe that he is. What is he? He is all of that. He is. God is all of that. If you need healing, he all of that. If you need 
provision, he all of that. If you need protection, he all of that. If you need a new mindset, he is all of that. Around the prophet, he took courage. And when Asa heard this message, when, when Asa heard this message from Azariah the prophet, he took courage and removed all the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns he had captured in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. Four points I want to pull out of this real quick. Number one, he heard the message. Come on, say he heard the message. Heard the message. Moving forward he is hearing the message God sends to you. You'll never move forward until you hear the message from God. You need to get direction from God so you can move forward out of situations, out of circumstances. Sometimes we're trying to get out of things and, and we need God to help us to overcome and, and walk through and get past, but you're not getting a message. Uh, Asa heard the prophet's word. The Bible said he heard the message. We got to learn how to hear the message. When, when Pastor Rod is preaching, when Pastor Dre is preaching, when, when whoever is preaching, when you are getting the word, you got to hear what God is saying to you. You, you got you to tune in and, and hear what is God saying to me. I know one day we're going to get our CDs back, but you can always go on our website and pull up a message because maybe you need to get it again so that you can hear the message that God is saying to you. Amen. You know why we go to church? So we can worship God and so God can speak to us. Amen. It, said, it said that Asa heard the message from the prophet. Moving forward is hearing the message God sent for moving forward, for overcoming, for getting past. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah. So you got to hear the message. He heard the message. Number two, he took courage. The message is given to you for you to take in courage. So watch this. When you get the message, when you get the word that God is saying, inside of what he said is your courage. Do you get that? Is that when God speaks to you, that's your courage. Because if God be so when he tells you something, I can take courage because I know I'm going to win. Amen. He said, I got you. Move. It's taken care of. Go. He's saying, resist. So you got to resist. You might be afraid to resist because you're thinking about the residual. And he said, don't worry about it. Resist. When he say no in the message, just come out and say, no, I can't do that. If he say yes, then I can say yes. I can do it because he said it. So I take care of you. Know, I, man, I just like, you know, I sometimes, you know, then they ask me to pray. Oh, Lord, you know, I ain't never got it in front of folks. When you pray, I just say, uh-uh, 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 pray. That's it. That's it. Just pray. But I don't, I don't pray like Pastor Roy. I don't pray, pray like Pastor Dre. I don't, I don't pray like Mama Carrie. I don't pray. You don't need to pray like them. Amen. You just need to pray like you. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that you bad at being somebody else? That's right. You are terrible at being. You might can imitate me. You might can imitate how what I might do or, or my little laugh or you my little walk or whatever. But you are terrible at being me. But guess what? I am terrible at being you. Every time I try to be somebody else, I mess up. You know why? Because God didn't make you to be nobody else. He made Roger to be who? And when you try to be somebody else, you become an imposter. <laughs> and I see people all the time on Facebook say, I hate fake people. <laughs> so, so if we don't like fake people, don't be nobody else. Be yourself. If people don't like you for you, I can't be nobody else. Me is me. Come on, is me me? Or is me you? Maybe. Me is me. 
you, what you believe that God is doing in your life. I ain't going to keep looking back at what I used to be. I'm going to keep looking forward at what I'm about to be. Amen. Amen. I told you when we came in a, a year ago, I said, you know, you see me now. But you watch me later. Amen. But we got to get on our way. Amen. Amen. We got to get focused yeah, on what God is trying to do in our life. Sometimes he give us just a little taste of what he's doing in our life. And we get excited, but then we won't be diligent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to get diligent about it. You know what? God doing something. I got to get diligent. I got to know how to overcome some of this stuff. The little crazy stuff that folks say, it's not going to work my nerve no more. It's not laughing at some of these crazy folks. They comedian crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs>
next year we want to do it again. We're going to make sure we get some advertisement for, because we want, our event was too good to be just a few people that we, we should have been packed out, but it was really, really good. Thanks for everybody that helped serve, that helped teach, that helped do everything. But I just want special thanks to, to Mr. Dre for it. Amen. And my wife absolutely took off Friday so she could be here Amen. to help. Amen. Amen. And I, I just want to say to you, babe, I do appreciate your incredible dedication that you have in New Cut. Amen. I'll tell you, sometimes it bothers me when you be fussing at me about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's for the good of New Cut. Amen. And I, I do appreciate you. Amen. Really, really do. She Amen. Very faithful. When she get committed to something, y'all know who the Texas that y'all get like at oh, one o'clock yeah. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and she's committed to what she when she get involved in something, she's all in. She is all in. So it's much appreciated to, to everybody. To and everything was really, really, really awesome. Huh? We got some popcorn in the back there. We got a popcorn machine back there that that uh, we got back there. I think from uh, Dr. Watkins. Dr. Watkins did. She pre was preparing food. She did a great job, and she was looking like she was really loving it. <laughs> I figured we gonna start going over to Watkins' career. Bro, <laughs> well, Drake Cook. Uh, one night he did the uh, what you guys know? I saw him over there, and it sounded like he was giving instructions. <laughs> so, I, so, thank you, man. Appreciate it. And he was saying he was crying. He made me cry. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time, and uh, we share a lot with one another, and much appreciate it. Amen. Much appreciate it. There were times when the men do this Thursday thing, and some several thirds, it just be me and him and them. And we sit in there, and just like we laugh with all of them, we sit in there and laugh with just me and him. And we get kicked out when it's just us two. <laughs> so, uh, appreciate God placing us together to do 